In this video, I make a giant, teeny tiny tech deck skate park. I've been having so much fun customizing tiny skateboards, I figured I might as well make a custom tiny skate park for them. Okay, I'm not very good at the finger skateboarding thing, but I'm also not good at skateboarding. And I realized that if I made a custom skateboard, I'd be an awesome skateboarder, which I did in a previous video. I used to play with them in high school, and let's face it, I still like to play with them as an adult. And since my limited customizer kit comes with three customizable finger skateboards, I figure it would be a good chance to celebrate by giving them a place to play. This is just one of the huge amount of awesome inclusions in the customizing kit. So more on that later in the video, but go check it out at customizerkit.com. Links in the description. I need to start with a plan. Working on a large sheet of MDF as my foundation, I map out a bit of a rough floor plan for what I think could make a cool skate park. I also needed to get a feel for the height variations to make sure that this would work and would feel like the right scales. Okay, I have the rough framework of my skate park. Well, I say framework. This is like the equivalent of a 3D sketch. It's really scribbly, but I'm just trying to get a flavor for what is where and if it's gonna work. I have a combination of elements I think the trick is gonna to be to have enough variety and interesting stuff to do tricks on, to have some visual flavor, and so that they practically lead from one to another, but also aesthetically pleasingly lead from one to another. I have no idea what I'm doing. So anyone who either skates or finger skates, let me know if I'm on the right track. <laughs> So with my very rough 3D plan laid out, it's time to follow that and try and create something a bit more substantial. The bulk of this project is going to be built on foam, but I want it to be really smooth and to flow really nicely and to be usable, of course. That means making sure all of my foam cuts are as even and symmetrical as possible, which is going to be particularly hard later when we get to the bowl. But we'll get to that when we get to that. We're starting off with all of these half pipes, quarter pipes, ramps and blocks which are a little more straightforward thanks to the help of Hobby Knives and large foam cutters. And with all of my straightforward blocking done, it's time to move on to all the curvy stuff, which is gonna be way harder to get a super smooth and usable finish on. Laying out a foundation of a single layer of thick foam, marking out where the curves will be, and with a really neat curve on a large hot knife blade, hopefully cutting a really smooth bowl shape that curves with the geometry of my skate park. Anytime I have to go over the same area, it creates more ripples in my cut. So I need to try and get as much of this done in as few cuts as possible. But the next step, of course, is going to be to try and smooth all of these surfaces out and head towards a much more usable and finished surface. So I've finished the blocking and there's this cool open area in the middle where I can sort of traverse from one thing to another and sort of move into the different areas. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, so I have kept this not glued down because I'm gonna put this away and work on that when this is drying because I need to do the surface area of all of this. And I'm gonna be using a light hydrocal plaster, which is almost ready to work with, but because I'm gonna be using it heavily, it'll probably chip over time, which is fine. It's gonna be authentic. I don't want it to chip and reveal white plaster underneath. So I'm gonna add a few drops of black paint so that we have more of a concrete color so that even if it chips through the excessive usage it's gonna get while I train my way up to a world standard of finger skating, it'll at least still look like, you know, concrete. So I have a five minute working time with this plaster. If I get it on all the surfaces first and then as it starts to set, I wet my hands and just smooth it out as much as possible to create a nice cement finish. Now I learned something new with every project and in this case it felt like a big revelation that working with hydrocoal plaster in any context other than moulds is very doable. This stuff is really cool. We have only ever used it for rock moulds, literally just pouring it in and taking it out when it's set. But oh my goodness, like being able to scrape it back and then it drying so quickly that I could then smooth it out as I go and get this awesome cement-like finish which really feels and looks like concrete as I scrape it back. 
the bulk of that work done, it's time to take this out to set in that very annoyingly hot sun, and I can move on and work on my giant tiny half bar. First things first, I need to attach the balsa wood to the surface of my ramp. And fortunately, this stuff is flexible enough to actually bend all the way along the curve of the ramp. Once all of that was clamped on and dry, it's time to move on to the brick texture on the outside. It's going to be nice having a variety of texture in the skate park. The wood of the half pipe, the brick of its structure, and the concrete all around the park. And then all of that will make a really cool foundation for the graffiti and all the fun custom stuff we're going to add later. But now that the rest of my skate park is dry, it's time to bring it in and sand it all to a smooth finish ready for the painting step. Okay, all right, that is all of the surfaces done at a foundation level. The plaster is gonna be fragile and I can't skate on it yet. I've gotta prep it. So this stuff, Mod Podge, is really, really cool. It's kind of like PVA, but it's really about creating a protective surface on things and because it's matte, mix that with some colors, coat all of my concrete with that and it should be much more rideable and get a uniform color happening. The same thing with the bricks, I'll do that in a red, then I can start dry brushing and adding a little more texture intentionally to the whole environment. This is, I'm loving this. This is feeling so fun. I, mean, I, I still have no confidence in my ability to finger skate, but uh, if I can make a skate park this cool, surely, surely I can skate like a boss too. Right? That's how it works, isn't it? Yeah. Now I've put on three or four coats of this paint and Mod Podge mix, making sure that it's as solid as possible for when I run my skateboard all over it. I don't want to chip any of that plaster underneath. And now it's just a matter of sponging on some texture and bringing this whole thing to life and making it way more appealing and realistic. Next up, props. With the help of Amy, we're putting together a whole bunch of these grind rails, ladders, and railing for the edges. So we have places for people to do cool tricks, and we have places to prevent people's hands falling off of the ledges, I guess. Safety first, people. Now we take my skate park and make it a skate park. I mean, no skate park looks pristine and newly laid. It looks like it's been lived in and drawn on for years. So I'm gonna graffiti up my skate park with the help of my team because graffiti is made by everyone. Like your graffiti can be made on anything as well. Jazz's customize it kit comes with over $200 worth of awesome art supplies and fun gadgets and practical stuff to customize from glasses to tumblers, pencil cases, and of course, custom skateboards. So we're gonna do a few more of those for this project as well. And you can do your own projects, whether it be your own custom skate parks, skateboards, or anything else you can imagine. And to make this extra fun for everyone, I'm hosting a competition. Anyone who gets a customize it kit and creates something really surprising or fun or interesting and shares it on Instagram or Twitter with the hashtags, all the details are in the description, has a chance of winning this custom Zelda OLED switch. So get your customize it kit, get creative, and have loads of fun. These paint pens are amazing and you're about to watch the whole team have a lot of fun with them making my skate park a proper skate park. Now I want to leave my mark with a bit of attitude and nothing says attitude like Pimp Bender from Futurama. I feel like adding a bit of character will be a bit of fun and I have to add a bit of myself too. So I'm going to leave my own personal tag as well, leaving the first graffiti mark on this hoodlum's paradise. I'm Murray, I decided I want to draw a character as well and I decided on Pico from Newgrounds and recently redesigned into Friday Night Funkin'. I'm Jen and it's my turn to vandalize the skate park. I really enjoy drawing really cute and bubbly things so I decided to draw well some bubbles and then some anime eyes and I thought it would look really cute and bring some liveliness to the half pipe. 
Uh, I'm Dave from Tabletop Time. So when I think of skate parks and a lot of mess and paint, I can only think of one thing. Can you guess what it is? Yes, it was Splatoon, or my amateur rendering of Splatoon. Oh well, this was fun. Back to painting models. Hi, I'm Alicia. I actually had a really big graffiti phase when I was in high school, but I never graffitied on any walls before, only in notebooks, so um, this should be fun. I decided to go for something a little bit bigger and I drew a crocodile with a cool hat. I gave him a really big belly and I just think that made him look really cute. I feel the one thing this skate park is missing is those authentic 90s uh, skate brands. So I reckon I'm gonna start with Maybe blind, I reckon that's the way to go. I'm Amy. So many spaces, so little time. Let's see how we go. I think I'm gonna do like Tom and add some skate logos you'd find in a real skate park from the 90s or early 2000s. With all the amazing and chaotic graffiti all around my piece perfecting it, it's time to tie it all in together. I'm using a mix of concrete colour compounds, which people use to dye concrete. So this is a great sort of pigment powder to put on top of these surfaces that you can varnish in and it creates an earthy matte texture that ties it all in together and gives it all a much more natural weathered vibe. And with that final step complete, it is time to show off my epic skate park. I am so happy with the result of this. Not only the skate park, our custom skateboards. This is making my inner child very excited. I, sh I now, now the pressure's on to see if I can actually do anything with it. This was all built up to be like, hey, and I can finally be a pro finger skater with the right skate park. Well, let's find out. Oh gee, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I've, I've done, I've stood at the top of these, uh, these things before. And I was always too chicken to go down. Now I'm feeling the same with my, with my tech deck. Oh no, I knew that would happen. <laughs> Maybe the trick is we're gonna start, we're gonna start in the easier bits, right? And. That was a rookie mistake. Maybe it's the board. I'm gonna swap this. I like Murray's Hello Kitty board. <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> All right, okay, I've got a plan. I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna jump up on grind the rail. I'm gonna go here. Flick up here, do a backflip, and land over here. That's my plan, you ready? How did your arm twist like that? Practice, my oh man, practice. I used to like, like lick my fingers, so it's stuck to my fingers. <laughs> but that's not- I think we all cheated that, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might have done all of this build up to prove that I'm not very good at finger skateboarding, but I am good at having fun with art and creativity. And if you enjoy that, well, you should subscribe because we do that a lot around here. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Well, uh, what's a cool like skater way of saying like, see you like later, dude.